Hello, this is Tony McCain coming at you live. Due to everything that's going on and people are now reaching out due to the death of George Floyd, I feel like it's right for my wife and I to have our stories heard regarding the death of our son and the discrimination we faced at Duke University Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. For two years, my wife and I have fought for our son due to his ALL leukemia. Bear with me. I pause because it's just a lot. Just a lot to take in retelling this story again. So bear with me. We heard Duke University was the best hospital that can treat his cancer. But we found out the hard way we were wrong. They did not like us advocating for him. I was threatened to get put out in power security because I had an opinion on my son by their bone marrow doctor, Dr. Puri. Their PICU you, their pick you supervisor, Tracy Frisbee. She threatened and she threatened to for us to have less visiting hours if we didn't comply and stop asking questions but instead write what we wanted in a notebook and the nurse and the nurse will get to it later mind you our son is two years old he can't speak for himself we had to speak for him but they wanted they wanted us to shut up it got out of, it got out of hand one nurse punctured his lung by putting a a tube through his nose down his down his neck to suck the bile out of his stomach but she didn't do it right and it wound up punching his lung we were hysterical but nobody cared the nurses weren't reprimanded at all we were punished and and definitely we had to have less visiting hours with our son they didn't check his line when they put a needle through his arm so his arm swelled up like a balloon and he was in constant pain. They didn't check his line. They did nothing. They Sorry. They showed no remorse or anything. They gave him an, inf an infection through his line that was going through his chest from his bone marrow doctor. Dr. Paul Martin saying he can do he can do the um he can fix it better than any surgeon he said the only thing he did was tape a popsicle stick together and stuck it together which caused my son to have a serious infection that could have killed him but the overall piece of evidence that caused him to pass away was they gave him the wrong bone marrow treatment that wasn't compatible with the cancer he had so what we thought he was going through the phases of his bone marrow, his new bone marrow accepting him. Instead, it was killing him slowly and painfully. And we watched our son slowly waste away. He was in constant pain, crying. He looked at us and we, we couldn't do anything. It got so out of, it got so out of hand with the nurses and at the PICU unit. They called their police, um, private police force on us. Um, their officer, um, their officer Lion, um, put us on um, putting both me and my wife out, and leaving our son at the at the mercy of those evil nurses and their supervisor and their supervisor in that hospital alone. Let me remind you, he's two years old without his parents, not even knowing his parents were gone they lied saying we could come back at seven because when I came back they said they they said we could come back when they said to come back I said no they said come back at seven he said no you gotta go so not one to argue I left he asked me was my wife here I said nothing because I was my right so he pushed me again he pushed me up against the wall and forcibly put my hands behind my back and handcuffed me and detained me in a room for an hour until he 
He claimed I had trespassing papers, but he never gave them to me. He drove me back and he drove me back to the Ronald McDonough house where me and my wife were staying. So my wife goes over there because she desperately desperately wanted to see our son. I drove we drove over there. I wasn't allowed to go in or else I they said I was gonna be arrested, so she was gonna go in and she was gonna she's gonna let me know when it's okay to come in. Five minutes passed and I was worried. So I kept calling until eventually I decided to go in the building where they were escorting her out. My wife cried in my arms saying they beat her up. They they beat her up. The security guard punched her in the face. The whole line of security, the, the whole line of nurses chanting, telling her to get out, get out. She said the supervising nurse Tracy Frisbee Tracy Frisbee was smiling throughout the entire ordeal they hurt my wife so bad she had to get surgery on her arm we eventually called my son's original hospital in Charlotte North Carolina Levine's Children's Hospital to get my son out of there where they did and they flew him via helicopter my wife and I drove our car back to Charlotte where just a week they said there was nothing he he could do. That's when we found out that they the bone marrow that they gave him in the first place was incompatible incompatible with the cancer that he had and he was dying and there was nothing we could do. We had to let our son go. And not, we watched him die in front of us. It's been a year now. That year was the roughest for us. It affected our marriage, our sanity, our happiness. We're slowly getting back to a decent place, but we're still suffering over the loss of our son and what we went through at that evil hospital. From the president to the police, um, to our private police force, especially their their officer, Officer Lyon, to the med medical chief officer to their supervisor Tracy Frisbee to their to their patient advocate to the doctors and nurses nobody was on our side they were they kept attacking us they didn't like us speaking up they wanted us to they wanted us to shut up and silence us and all we wanted to do was let our son have the best care he could possibly have and they wouldn't let us have it We had to watch our son die and suffer while at the same time we were suffering at the hands of them just so he could get the best care he could have. We regret going to that hospital. They it hurt it it hurts every time I think about it. My wife suffer my wife is suffering the most. I don't sometimes I don't know what to do to console her. I don't know what to do with myself sometimes. We called every lawyer, every advocate person, anything for us to have justice, but for some reason they're so afraid to even touch them. Like every lawyer in Wake County basically works for them. We're still not trying to and we're still not trying to give up. I just want this to get out there that Duke University Hospital is an e is an evil hospital. They deserve no recognition. They deserve They don't need to be they don't need to be in business every African American there don't need to go there at all or else you'll be in the same situation as my wife and I and my son stay away from that hospital it's the best thing you can do don't take nobody's word for that it's the best hospital it's not 
is the is the most evil of evil hospitals in this country.